some different commercial products and they work fine. Uh, you can use homemade solutions like uh, white vinegar, uh, soak it and it, it will um, loosen the rust. Um, my preferred method is electrolysis and the, and the reason I like it is that it doesn't, uh, once the rust is removed, it doesn't really etch or damage the base metal. And uh, it takes a little while for it to, to do its job, but uh, it's, it's cheap and most people have the things they need at home, or if they don't, they, they're very inexpensive to buy. Um, let me talk a little bit about rust itself. Um, everybody is familiar with um, a tool that has a, uh, a rusty red coating on it. That's the iron oxide that, uh, um, that most people think of as rust. And for today's purposes, I'm just going to call that red rust. And uh, as the metal oxidizes, uh, the iron oxide, which is uh, Fe3O2, I don't remember, I'm not a chemist. Fe2O3. Um, Fe2O3. Um, it occupies a, a fairly large volume compared to the base metal. And because of that uh, expansion in volume, it tends to be kind of loose and flaky. You can see it comes off on my hands. A little bit of abrasion, and, and that pretty much will come off. Um, but what is under it is what a lot of people are not as familiar with, but um, it's actually Fe304, I think it's magnetite. Uh, is the chemical composition. Uh, for today's purposes, I'm just gonna call it black rust. You can see here on the face of this hammer where I have um, abraded some the, the red rust off of there and it's a very shiny black layer. This is very tightly bonded to the base metal. It doesn't occupy a significant difference in volume so it doesn't detach quite as readily. But if you really want to get down to the base metal, uh, restoring a tool, um, you need to remove this. You can do it with an abrasive process, uh, sandpaper or you know, uh, wire wheel or what have you, but that does damage the, uh, the base metal some. Now whether that's a big deal like on the face of a hammer, that's probably not you know, a major factor. But electrolysis will dislodge that and, and get you down to the base metal without damaging the base metal itself. Um, let me just uh, show you how to set up an electrolysis tank. And you can use any kind of a, a container. I like to use something that's non-conductive in an old plastic tubby. This is a, a, a cereal uh, tubby for, um, uh, you know, like Tupperware but I have also a, a, a big uh, plastic tubby that I have my plane in that's been cooking for a couple of days. Um, you want to fill it with enough water to submerge the part that you're trying to de-rust uh, completely. And, um, and then you have to create an electrolyte solution. Uh, for that, you can use a variety of things. This is just... Uh, uh, it's washing soda and you can buy this at the grocery store in, in the uh, uh, laundry detergent aisle. This is the Arm & Hammer brand, but the brand is not so important. If you, do, if you don't want to do electrolysis very often, you have some baking soda at home. It's more expensive than the washing soda, but it doesn't take much. Uh, you need to mix about a tablespoon per gallon of water so it's good to measure whatever water you got I've, I've got two about two-thirds of a gallon here in this tank and so I'm going to very precisely measure out two-thirds of a uh, tablespoon of washing soda and I'm just going to stir it up until it dissolves it's dissolves easier if you have some warm water but um, I have cold water here today, so it'll just take a little more stirring. It's not a big deal. This uh, solution, the concentration is not that critical. If you have a little less than uh, a 
a tablespoon per gallon, it'll probably work fine. A whole lot less, it'll just work slower. And if you put a lot more, you're just wasting it. You don't really need uh, more than a, a tablespoon per gallon. That's pretty well dissolved. Now this hammerhead that I want to de-rust, I have, uh, it had a broken handle on it, so I just cut that off. And in order to make an electrical contact to the uh, metal itself, I just drove a screw down right next to the to the metal where the old uh, wooden post was, and uh, hopefully the threads of that screw will make enough solid contact here, and I actually checked it with an ohmmeter, so I mean, I, I know I've got a good electrical contact. And I'm just gonna submerge that. Now the other thing you need is a second electrode. And it could be any ferrous metal. It's not um, a big deal. This is just a piece of angle iron that I had. Uh, you can see I've actually used this one before. Um, this is a sacrificial anode and it will get very rusty in the process. Um, so you will hook this up to the positive lead of whatever uh, DC power supply you're using. And, um, and I'm gonna put one of these down in each corner of this and just make sure that I'm not actually touching um, the part I'm de-rusting to the electrodes. And then I'm using an old battery charger. Uh, that works pretty well. You can use, uh, I like to use 12 volts because it's, it's usually pretty easy to find. I'm going to connect up my negative lead to the part that I'm de-rusting and I'm going to connect the positive lead to my uh, sacrificial anode here. And I'm going to plug that in. Now you, it'll start um, flowing electricity through this uh, um, solution and what you'll see is it, it'll start to bubble and it's already starting to bubble and that is that um, uh, the action that is loosening the uh, the underlying black rust the red rust will come off very quickly the um, black rust it may take hours or even days for it to uh, completely uh, uh, dislodge the nice thing is that once it has finished, it just quits working. You won't see any more bubbles, uh, and at that point, uh, the part's gone as far as it can go. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna let that go, and, and we may come back to this at the very end of the meeting just to pull it out of there, and you can see uh, how it's actually, uh, how much it's happened in just you know less than an hour. What I will do is go over here to the, then where I had this stuff um, since last Thursday. So this has been in the solution for a couple of days. And you can see uh, the part is, is pretty black. And I'm gonna take it over here. This is just a, a tub full of water. Um, I don't know if David's shown you yet, but uh, we can show you a picture of what this flame looked like before it went into the solution. And you can see just with a little scrubby sponge that that rust is really gone. Now, if the base metal is pitted, this is not gonna put the metal back, but even down in those pits, it will remove all of the rust. And you can see Okay, David's showing you the picture of what this looked like before. If we can come back to the after picture here again. Uh, you know, that's pretty clean. Uh, I, I may want to take some uh, sandpaper or whatever and flatten this, this, the sole of this plane if I was doing a complete operation. Now, I do want to mention one thing on the back side of this. Uh, you'll see that this... Uh, 
big flakes of black. And this is actually the, the Japaning that was on the, the part before. Now typically, if this is attached to the metal solidly, the electrolysis won't, won't take that off. But since this thing was in pretty rough shape, um, and you'll see parts of this where the Japaning is still intact, uh, it won't remove paint, it won't remove the Japaning, it won't remove plating that are on these pieces. But if that plating isn't attached to the metal solidly, or if, it's, if the Japaning is loose, the bubbling action that happens when the, when the electrolyte gets next to the base metal will pull that stuff loose. So if you're trying to preserve the Japaning, you know, keep that in, 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 uh, in mind. This, uh, this one was in bad enough shape where I had no intention whatsoever of, of preserving the original paint. In fact, I would probably take this and powder blast it and powder coat the surface, but you could also paint it with, you know, uh, Rust-Oleum or, or whatever. Or if you wanted to do a real complete restoration, if it was an important tool, you could re-Japan it, which is a, a, another process altogether I won't get into here. But that's basically how simple it is. Um, the nice thing, well, you can see this old tub uh, full of this nasty-looking foam. This is particles of rust and what have you that have come loose. And because the solution is basically soapy, it, it leaves this lovely appetizing suds on top. But nothing in here is harmful. You can take this and dump it out in the backyard and it's not gonna cause any problem. You can uh, dump this down your drain. I mean, there's nothing toxic in it. Uh, I'm not wearing gloves. If you're sensitive, if you have real sensitive skin, uh, and, and you, you know, have sensitivity like to a, a laundry detergent or something like that, you may want to put some gloves on just to, uh, you know, be safe. But this is so, such a mild alkaline solution that it's, uh, it doesn't cause me any problem at all. I've handled these lots of times and it doesn't even irritate the skin. It will stain. Um, but that's basically how easy it is. Um, this thing's really bubbling now. Can you show the anode that you used on that tub? Oh yeah, this one, um, this is just a piece of rebar. Uh, and that brings up another point I would do want to mention. Um, electrolysis, if this was the part that I was um, de-rusting, electrolysis works best line of sight so that you really want to expose the surfaces that are in bad shape. Um, you know, to an electrode, and having electrode on both sides of the, of the piece you're de-rusting is, is uh, helpful. You can see I put two pieces of iron in this, this other one over here, um, and it, uh, so that all of the area around the part is, is basically in line of sight to the, um, to the piece that I'm de-rusting de and the uh, sacrificial anode. Now this, in the process will get very corroded. Uh, you can see at the top it's fairly clean where it was out of the solution, but inside it's corroded. And as you'll get oxygen and, and hydrogen bubbles that come up from the two electrodes. Um, it, both of those are you know, readily present in, uh, in, in the atmosphere. They're not uh, toxic in any way. Hydrogen obviously is uh, is flammable, and if you allow huge amounts of hydrogen to accumulate, you could have an explosion hazard. And if you don't believe that, then Google Hindenburg. But um, uh, this, this, all the bubbles, the, those gases dissipate very readily, especially hydrogen. It's the lightest uh, element. So. Um, if you're in a fairly open area like a garage or what have you, you shouldn't have any trouble at all. But I would not recommend putting this in a closed cabinet or something and, and letting it sit. Although hydrogen dissipates so readily that probably even wouldn't be a problem. But just use, use common sense. I mean, let it be out somewhere where uh, it ventilates readily and you won't have any issue at all. 
But this is the electrode. I did go ahead and solder a piece of uh, copper wire to it so I'd get really good uh, electrical connection. But that's probably way overkill. I could have probably just clipped to it with the leads from the uh, battery terminal and it would have been just fine. That, that's all I did over here is, uh, actually I had a piece of copper just so I could hang it. Uh, this one is hanging. The other one in there was, the tubby was just the right size where it sat up at an angle. You wouldn't want to have the sole of the plane flat against the bottom of the tubby just because that would minimize the amount of uh, action uh, in the solution. This one um, is suspended, so it's actually all the way around it. It's, uh, it's exposed to the various electrodes. Um, that's, that's it. Uh, I think at the end of the meeting, we'll come back and look at this one and I'll pull it out of there and we can see how much it's done in a few minutes. But for the most part, um, it, it takes anywhere from a few hours to a few days. And uh, you can stop this at any point, just unplug your charger. Um, you know, that's a safety thing, unplug the charger and then disconnect stuff. If you disconnect it with the charger plugged in, it, it could spark. And if there's any hydrogen there, it, you know, that could um, ignite. So it, it's like when you're charging a battery on a car or something, you've got explosive gases around. You want to make sure it's ventilated and you want to make sure the thing's off before you connect and disconnect it. So just simple, um, you know, electrical safety practices are, are, uh, are advisable. Uh, while the meeting's going on, I'll, I'll try and clean up this uh, plane base here a little bit more and maybe we can get some pictures. In fact, I will get some pictures and I will add them to the PowerPoint or the uh, PDF file that we're going to put on the website so you can see before and after and what it looked like. This one was in pretty rusty shape and I think even doing nothing else to this plane, um, I could put it back together again and it would be perfectly usable. If I wanted to do a complete restoration, of course, I can flatten the soles and do things like that. But uh, I've, I've gone from a very rusty piece of cast iron to one that's uh, virtually no rust at all. Any questions? Are there questions? I mean, I'd be happy to answer questions now or uh, when we come back later. If you had, think of something in the meantime, I can answer them then. Uh, is it important to use iron for your uh, your uh, for the uh, and it doesn't matter if you use a copper wire or something similar to that. Uh, it's 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 best to use a ferrous metal, uh, a steel, iron, uh, something like that. Um, I have read online where people have used stainless steel. Um, I've also read horror stories about stainless. Uh, stainless contains chromium. Uh, it's not likely that you would dislodge enough chromium um, for it to be dangerous, and there's arguments on, on the web as to whether or not that's the case. But it is possible with stainless steel that you could cr create what's called hexavalent chromium in the solution, which is extremely toxic, extremely deadly, uh, uh, very dangerous to handle. Um, I would not recommend you use stainless at all. I'd just completely stay away from it. I, I wouldn't use copper because basically what you'll end up doing is copper plating the, uh, the piece that you're trying to de-rust. It would probably de-rust, but uh, it would probably copper plate it in the, in the meantime. So I would, everybody's got a piece of, you know, angle iron or, or rebar or, you know, uh, you know, wire together a whole bunch of nails or something. I mean, just about anything will serve as, an, as a sacrificial anode. The bigger it is, uh, the better. Once it rusts to a certain point, uh, it'll become less effective. In fact, if you, if, I don't know if you can see in the one that's churning right now, I have one electrode, one anode that is, um, is fairly new and one that I've reused from before. And you can see the amount of bubbles around the one that is new is more. So um, uh, 
you can take the old one here and just wire brush it, sandpaper it, whatever, knock some of the rust off and use it as many times as you want. But the cleaner it is, the better it will work. Um, any other questions? That was my question. Can you continue to use that rebar forever? Oh, yeah. This rebar, I would take this, since it fits this tubby uh, and it's on both sides, I mean, uh, I could take that and want, run a wire wheel over it and knock the rust off and use it. Uh, you can't use it forever because eventually the metal is going to you know, corrode to a point where it's gone, but probably not in my lifetime. Um, I don't do this so often that uh, it's it's that big a deal. I mean, I could probably use this electrode for the rest of my life and it'd be fine. Uh, but try to clean it up a little bit. It certainly doesn't have to be pretty, uh, but you want to get down to the metal uh, as much as is convenient to do because it'll work better, it'll work faster. Uh, um, some people will use really powerful chargers uh, that will make yeah, the, the more current you can get through here, the faster it'll work. If you're just trying to de-rust uh, you know, something that's not real important, that's fine. Uh, if, you want, if you have a really important piece or uh, uh, important piece from your family or whatever that you want to be really careful with, try to limit the current. Um, there's an article that's in the presentation that'll be online that, uh, that goes into a lot more of the chemistry and, and electronics of, of this whole setup. And he recommends a two amp um, uh, flow rate. And I, I don't know that, I've never measured the actual amperage going through here, but I think probably mine is in that range. And uh, going higher than that will make it work faster, but speed is really not my priority. I mean, I can put it in there and leave it for a couple of days and it's not a big deal. Oh, is it okay to put multiple items in there, or like you don't have a plane, you go to the frog and everything else? Oh, yes. Yes, you can put as many as you can put in there. Uh, just make sure that they're electrically isolated from the sacrificial anode. Uh, I have seen where people have taken like a, a fry basket, you know, a metal mesh basket of some kind, and put screws and pieces down in there and submerged it and de-rusted them. And, and that should work fine. You want to make sure there's a good electrical connection between that basket and the, and the screw. Probably there's enough of a connection just laying on the bottom of it where it'll work. The worst case scenario is, is one of those pieces won't uh, electrolyze. It won't, uh, won't get de-rusted. Too many will block the view of the animal. I can't understand. It'll block the view of the anode if you get too many in there. Yes, that's true. Uh, you do you do want to be able to see what's going on. That's one reason I like these uh, semi-clear tubbies. Uh, is you can see whether it's bubbling still. You can see uh, that they're actually separated before you plug it in. Uh, you know, just be careful with those things. And once it's set up, just leave it alone. Let it do the work. In, in the case of... Go ahead. Oh, thank you, David. What what was this is Matt? What was the um, the substance he used in the in the water? Washing soda. I mean, you can buy this in the laundry detergent aisle of your grocery store. Uh, this is not. Uh, I think this box was four bucks or something, and I bought it. I don't know five so years ago. Yeah. That's it's, different than baking soda? It is different. Uh, I can't tell you what's different. Um, uh, it, but baking soda will work. Calcium uh, carbonate versus sodium bicarbonate. Okay, calcium carbonate versus sodium bicarbonate. Uh, all you're trying to do is, is create a slightly alkaline conductive solution. Both of those work. Um, so the amount is not critical. You can see when I measured it in there, I didn't really measure it. I just put some in. Uh, putting too much will just make it sudsier and um, and probably make a bigger mess and you'll waste the stuff. But that box I bought like five years ago is probably going to last me the rest of my life. Um, I mean, you can make a 55-gallon drum of de-rusting uh, electrolyte 
two or three times with that box probably. Terrence, you mentioned... Uh, Terry, Terry. Yes. Terry, now this is Larry Taylor. I got a question. Where you got your clips, you said not use copper, but when your camera moved down there, I see copper, a bare copper wire. Is that copper or what kind of metal? Well, the bare copper wire is attached yeah. to the piece I'm de-rusting. Now, I do, I do have a, a little bit of the copper uh, underwater here um, on one of these electrodes. And, uh, and yeah, there's, there's probably a potential for that to corrode and to introduce copper ions into there, which could potentially copper plate. So, I mean, if you wanted to be really careful about it, you could make sure that the copper is completely out of the solution. Uh, I was too lazy to do that today, so I didn't. But uh, the amount of copper in there is, is minuscule compared to the, uh, the amount of the ferrous material. So I don't think this is going to be an issue. Plus, it's a hammerhead. If it got a little bit of copper plating on it, I'm, I'm, I'm just not going to lose a whole lot of sleep on that. Now, if that was a, a number one Stanley plane or something, I'd probably be a lot more careful. Okay, could you not also take the wire, the copper wire, and just strip a little off on the end and leave the insulation on and use that? Yes. Also. Absolutely. In fact, this the other electrode, the old one here, that's exactly what is the case. Uh, okay. Terrence, like uh, you mentioned about the stainless steel galvanizes the same kind of thing. And well, it galvanizes zinc, though, yeah. and uh, the coating. Uh, it's a zinc coating, and um, I have used it, and it works. Uh, not harmful? No, I don't, I don't think there'd be any harm in using that. Uh, I prefer to use just I mean, any kind of chunk of cast iron. Uh, uh, I have some old uh, pulleys that are way about two pounds a piece that would make wonderful um, you know, anodes. I haven't used those. I, I have enough scrap pieces of just brackets and iron, uh, you know, angle iron or whatever, or rebar. I've got several pieces of rebar just sitting in my backyard. Uh, rebar is a wonderful anode. It works uh, really well and it's cheap as, as it can be. So now I, I don't know if you can see on this plane, that I just rinsed off over here, I'm already getting a little tiny bit of rust. This base metal is absolutely exposed. Uh, when you get it cleaned off, um, it's gonna start rusting immediately and you'll get that black rust. In fact, let me show you this. This is, this is one of Van's uh, saw blades and I'm going to try and get where you can see this. In the very center where the etching is, he's used some steel wool or whatever and abraded it down to the shiny steel. But the vast majority of this plate, you can see here on where the handle was, where it was, it's actually got the red rust on it. But the vast majority is very shiny black. And that's that magnetite layer. Uh, the electrolysis will take that all the way down to the base metal. But once it's down to that base metal, you need to protect that metal. So what I need to do with this, this is such a light amount of rust that that'll just wipe right off. But I, what I need to do fairly soon, once I get all that wiped off, is make sure it's completely dry and put a coat of wax or oil or whatever just to protect the metal like you would do with any cast iron uh, piece. Um, just Johnson paste wax is wonderful and it smells great. Uh, just, you know, put it on there. There's lots of products you can put on there. Uh, you know, people with 3 in one oil on it. Uh, there's a ton of ways to uh, protect the metal. Uh, use your favorite one, but it, this is gonna need protecting pretty quickly because it's uh, very vulnerable in this state, I'll put it that way. It, this plane hasn't been this clean in probably 50 years. So, um, anyway. Quick Other questions. questions. Do you, uh, if you, if you had to, could you turn your your piece yes. that you were, were using? Because you said that the, the flow would be important. If you were doing four sides of something, would you normally turn it yeah, during a, the process? Yes. Okay. Uh, in fact, 
I frequently stop this and check it just to see how it's doing. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with doing that as often as you want. Just turn off your power, pull the piece out. If it's really getting de-rusted on one side, not the other, turn it around. You know, just uh, manipulate the piece in there however you need to. One wonderful thing about electrolysis is even on complex pieces that have elaborate shapes, it works just as well. If you're using a wire wheel or an abrasive method, you know, getting down in the nooks and crannies can be a real pain. I've seen where people use this on like old firearms where they will, you know, de-rust a piece that has, you know, all kinds of elaborate machining on it and um, rather than remove base metal, they use electrolysis and it really gets it clean without uh, damaging the underlying metal. So, um, other questions? I can't read it. Terry? Terry? Yes? Uh, you know, talking about the line of sight from the anode, one of the things that I like to do, as you probably remember, is I like to use the, uh, the coffee can because it gets you it gets you a 360 degree anode around the plane. It works really well for me. Yeah, that, that's a, a, a great point. Uh, in fact, you know, if you were doing something like uh, a saw blade like this, obviously that won't fit in there, but there's nothing wrong with de-rusting half of it. Turn around, de-rust the other half, or, or to get a very thin, uh, you know, tall uh, tubby. I've seen where people not, uh, this probably wouldn't fit in, in like a four inch copper or a four inch PVC pipe, but if you have a long, thin, a piece you were de-rusting and you put you know a couple of pieces of rebar on the side and you suspend the piece you're de-rusting down the middle of it the shape of the tank doesn't matter just uh, as long as it's submerged the part that's submerged is going to get de-rusted um, and uh, Frank has done probably more of the uh, electrolysis than I have and the coffee can trick it works really well because you can put a part down in the middle and you've got a complete it's completely surrounded but if you can just get uh, a sacrificial anode distributed around the tank and you can put littler pieces in the corners or, or you know just use your imagination any way you can do it if part of the anode actually sticks up above the um, solution that makes it very easy to clip to and um, and you know clean up later but um, the anode can be completely submerged and usually on these uh, um, angle iron pieces that I have uh, I will submerge it it's just that this was a small enough tank where I didn't have room to do that um, okay, let me before we cut away I'm going to Unplug this. And we're going to look at this. As you can see, that's already just in a few minutes. Now, you can see how black this is. That red rust is gone and just a gentle wipe here and I'm already down to base metal in the central part of this. Uh, it's still got a fair amount of the black rust around there, so I'm gonna let this continue on, but um, it just shows that, uh, I'm gonna try and get this, make sure I'm not touching anything before I turn it back on. You can see how quickly that has made a real difference. So I'm gonna let that continue on. We'll check back on it later. But I'll let you get on with the rest of the meeting unless there's other questions. And, um, and we'll check back on it in a little bit. One thing I was going to mention that I didn't mention before, if you don't have a power supply for, for doing electrolysis, almost everybody's got somewhere in their attic or something, an old computer, and a computer power supply is 
wonderful things with this. Most of them have 12 volt um, for parts on their uh, computer supply that will supply a significant amount of current. Um, this is actually a, uh, a computer power supply. I just put it in a box and put the different voltages that it has on it. Uh, I have some other things in here that will measure current and stuff. This I use just for electronics hobby stuff, but uh, it's a cheap way to accomplish what, what you need. Uh, also, if you have a, a part that you want to be really careful with and you're afraid to go too fast on it, you can use one of the lower voltages um, on a computer power supply. They, most of them have a 5 volt and a 3.5 volt, uh, a 3.2 volt rail that uh, you can take advantage of. And it, the voltage isn't important, you just want to get some current flowing. Obviously, the higher the voltage, the more current you're going to have, but uh, that's not a critical thing. I have unplugged this. We're going to check one more time. This has been running, what, maybe an hour? And it's still not down completely to the base metal, but you can see that... Uh, I'll try to get the light shining on it, where you can see the shiny base metal through the black rust on there uh, even more than it was a little while ago. I'm guessing that after a day, uh, somewhere in that range, this is going to be good to go. Uh, but that's it. If there are any other questions, I'll entertain those, but uh, otherwise I'm going to put this back in and let it keep cooking. Leave it till next Thursday. Well, actually, I don't mind leaving this charger up here at the Guild, and I wouldn't I can leave some washing soda and everything else if people want to come set one up and, you know, uh, have a plane or a, an old Colt 45 or something they're going to uh, de-rust. Of course, I probably wouldn't leave that around here overnight. But uh, anyway, uh, it, if someone wants to use it, uh, I certainly don't mind leaving it. And, uh, you know, just get in touch with me and we'll work something out.